So if you've been following my vlog at all, you'll know that one of the things that I've recently purchased is the Softube Console 1. And I went through a lot of soul searching in to find the reasons why I would justify this purchase for myself. And I wanted to kind of outline five of those reasons for anyone who's watching, maybe considering buying one of these, or maybe this would give you the reasons not to. So here's my kind of five point countdown for why you might want to buy a console one. So number one, it's a soft tube um, emulation of the SSL 4000E console. So what's the big deal about that? They're used for very big artists in really big studios and there's just no way that as a general rule you could touch one of these consoles across all of your channels. In the case of the Softube one, you know, in, in researching, you know, is this a good example of an SSL 4000E, I read tons of posts out there and there's lists of different SSL um, emulations in different plugins available out there. And in almost every discussion, somewhere along the line, someone pops in and says, hey, how come you guys haven't mentioned the console one? And then a few other people say, oh yeah, the console one, that thing's awesome. And so it, it's really up there with all the rest of the best of them. So it definitely, from a software perspective, um, it, it's comparable to other emulations out there. Now for me, I've never had the opportunity to use that kind of a console or really any. Um, so I don't have a lot of input on the matter as to whether or not it is an accurate emulation of a real SSL 4000E console. And I'm a true believer in, you know, the instruments you use, the equipment you use before that, and mostly the talent and songwriting that you have factor in at least as much, probably more than any piece of equipment or combination of pieces of equipment. But a lot of things have been recorded on this thing and it's uh, it's popular for a reason so I'm gonna leave it at that and just say you know if it's a good emulation that's good enough for me number two so this is the second point of the five It is price comparable to other similar options and I'm sure I'm gonna get some kickback on this because you'll certainly find less expensive ways to do this uh, even waves has you know their their SSL uh, for I think $99 right now. And I, I'm sure that there are other ones even cheaper than that. You could probably find a $29 one out there if you really looked around. That's great. That's not what I'm comparing to though. So the three that I've listed here in my blog are the, uh, the BX console uh, from Brainworks, the Universal Audio uh, version and the Solid State Logic, of course, they're who made the thing to start with. So you gotta figure theirs is probably pretty good. Um, their channel strips are 349, 299, and 329, respectively. So I figure with this whole package coming in at about 550, um, figure that the hardware is worth 250 of that, so you're right at about 300 bucks, which is in the middle of the pack for the other ones. Um, now I happen to have gotten mine for 350 because I got it on eBay, and it's basically brand new, looks you know mint out of the box. So um, you know I guess I kind of kind of lucked out that I could say either I paid the same amount for my plugin and the hardware was free or each of them was half, whichever kind of accounting you want to do. Um, it's a solid piece of hardware and that's point number three, the hardware. The hardware has got a nice uh, metal case around it. All of the knobs feel solid. Um, they don't have a cheap plastic feel about them, even though I think the knobs themselves are plastic. Um, they are a continuous uh, scroll. They have some nice uh, mellow uh, kind of amber looking LEDs on there. They're not super bright in your room. And, um, you know, they're really great. The only thing about the hardware I think I would like better is if the buttons were soft touch like they are on the uh, fader port, where they're kind of like a gel rubbery kind of plastic on the fader port. These are a hard plastic and they actually have a clicking sound. Um, so that would, you know, prevent you from being able to use them when you had a live mic or something. But in most cases, you probably wouldn't be using the buttons then anyway. Um, so it's a great piece of hardware. It's very integrated and um, it makes an instant 
to be able to get into your plugins and use them. And that's where I'm going to go into point number four, the on-screen display. And this is really kind of an extension of the hardware. And what's cool about this and different from what you would usually see in, you know, any other kinds of plugins is ordinarily when you put a plugin on a track, you know, say for example, if I put, um, you know, the fat channel on, on one of my uh, Studio One channels, I'll have this. And if I close that out, then I have to go back and, and find the fat channel and double click on it to get back in it. Now, Console One has their equivalent um, VST plugin that, that you can see here. Um, but there's also a separate on-screen display. And that on-screen display runs as an actual program that's outside of your DAW. So when you press the button and it brings up the on-screen display, you get something that looks like this instead. It's very scalable, so even if you know you want to make that smaller, you know you could bring it way down like this. It still is sharp enough to be usable, or you can make it you know real large or put it over on another screen or whatever you want to do with it. It's very readable. It also has an auto mode, so it can come in and out as you touch the different um, pieces, uh, the different knobs, different buttons to bring pieces in and out. So for example, if I turn on the EQ, turn off the EQ, um, if I had this in automatic mode, so I'm going to turn it off, put it in automatic mode. So now it's on right now. We're going to let it go ahead and turn off. And then if I press, you know, just even turn one of these knobs, it's immediately going to come back on screen. You can see that the EQ has been adjusted. I've stopped and now it automatically goes away and gets out of the way. And I could get over to another channel. I'm now on you know, backup two, channel three. And then I can go back in and let's say I did something with the compressor. I've just engaged the compressor now and I'm going to adjust the ratio and, you know, the release time and the attack time. And then let's say we uh, turn that compressor back off again and we let it go away on its own. And then I'm going to adjust the drive. And as I do that, you can see the drive starts going up. I'm automatically at drive five. I stop moving the thing and the whole thing gets out of the way. It's really really nice to not have to be going you know oh well where is that plugin on which channel did I put that on and how can I how can I get into the GUI of that channel I went into you know my VSTs oh wait I have to get over to this fat channel one and then I've got to go over to the EQ within the fat channel there's just a lot of different um, breaks in the process of trying to do a mix where uh, the console one makes it very straightforward and then my last, number five, is the portability. And the portability of the thing is great because I can load it up in Studio One. Or if you happen to use um, another DAW, you know, whatever one it happens to be, in my case, uh, Cakewalk by BandLab, I can bring it up in there. has the same plugin, has the same controls, works the exact same way. I can still use my volume up and volume down on, you know, the individual channels. And those really control the uh, the actual DAW channel as well as you can see here on uh, the backup two channel that's kind of happening there um, I can you know adjust my pan in the same way you can see that also happening there on channel two and those things traverse over to um, you know cakewalk by band lab as well so this is very portable even though each of them has you know their own in the case of uh, console one, I've got the fat channel that has an EQ and a compressor and a high pass and, you know, a limiter and all these different kinds of things. And in Cakewalk, we've got the pro channel that has all of those things and you can put uh, plug-in chains and all that kind of stuff on there. They are individual to those DAWs. You can't move them from one to the other. So you don't get that consistency of knowing how your channel strip works. And knowing that when you go from one to the other, it's going to behave the same way in either one. So I hope this video has been useful for you. Please take a moment, hit a reaction in the blog if you would. Uh, I'm open to comments. Please put those in as well. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And I appreciate your time watching.